Herzlich willkommen zurück zum AI das Summit 2023. Sie hatten jetzt eine völlig schöne Pause. Ich hoffe, Sie haben sie gut genutzt für eine kleine Verstärkung vielleicht, um bereit zu sein für unser großes Panel, nicht die finale Veranstaltung bei uns äh, beim EIDA Summit, aber dennoch für mich zumindest auch die, ähm, die größte mit, äh, mit einigen äh, Gästen. EIDA ist europäisch, ähm, auch wenn wir natürlich im Bitkom immer ähm, Deutschland und deutsche ähm, Unternehmen fördern und repräsentieren, ähm, haben wir uns gedacht, dass wir zum finalen Panel äh, des EIDA Summit nochmal auf die europäische ähm, Ebene schauen und deswegen werde ich auch ab jetzt ähm, das, äh, die, die Sprache oft zum Englischen wechseln und ähm, auch mit unseren Panelisten dann auf Englisch referieren. Sie können natürlich trotzdem jederzeit Fragen stellen, gerne auch auf Deutsch. Ähm, wir können hier übersetzen, das ist gar kein Problem. Seien Sie nicht scheu, ähm, stellen Sie Zwischenfragen, wir ähm, haben den Chat im Auge. Many questions around the EU digital identity wallet are yet to be answered, but one thing is clear. It's going to be much more than just a digital copy of your EID card. While the EU institutions negotiate in Brussels right now over the final text of the new EIDAS regulation, four pan-European um, consortiums have been preparing for over a year to start testing and developing different versions of the EU DI wallet. Now they are ready to start, or already have started, And I'm incredibly happy and honored to welcome them to the EIDA Summit. From all over Europe, um, let me introduce you to uh, Dr. Moritz Heuberger from uh, Germany, Tor Alvik, Alvik from Norway, I hope I don't butcher your names, guys, oh. um, David Magar mm -hmm. from uh, Sweden, and uh, last but not least, uh, Luis Alfons Arinho Martin from Spain. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. This is not the first time you meet. I just asked you uh, asked you three minutes ago, and um, it was actually great to see you guys um, joking with each other. You know, being um, more than just um, um, yeah four separate consortiums. I think just uh, talking to you for three minutes um, already made me feel like you know this is a European project, and uh, we're all working towards towards the same goal. But for um, me here in the studio, for uh, everyone at home. Uh, could I please ask you each to maybe summarize your specific uh, project in uh, two to three minutes? And I'd maybe like to start, I I'll go from left to right. No, no discrimination here, I'll go from, uh, from left to right. Uh, David, you're up. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I uh, uh, appreciate the comment on, on the European there, Clemens, and I think you're correct. We, we do speak to each other and we really like to make this work uh, between each other as well. Uh, so uh, the EWC consortia uh, consists of about now 672 uh, entities, uh, both public and private. So we'll have a quite a uh, big amount of private uh, actors involved in our consortia, uh, which we're quite happy about uh, because we think that that is a road to market success in the end, coming from a bit our Nordic perspective. Um, we focus on uh, three use cases. Uh, uh, the travel credentials is the, is the kind of more uh, upfront up case. So anything that has to do with traveling, you need to identify you want to show your boarding pass, pass or get it to your wallet, you want to check into a hotel, you don't want the papers. So that, that's one part of it. Uh, you can travel, of course, as a matter of uh, tourism uh, or in business. Uh, so we also want to work a lot with uh, uh, the, the wallets for organizational organizations or the legal person wallet that is also part of the regulation. Uh, that is one of the reasons where, why we have uh, quite a few business registers, such as uh, the one I, I work with in the consortia. Um, then payment uh, is, is one uh, building block as well. Uh, payment is, is It's important, of course, it's something that you do uh, often, and then uh, we can also see from the experience Nordic, Netherlands, uh, uh, Italy, which all of, all of us are involved in our consortia, uh, that uh, payment is a way to, to get traction for the, for, for the EI scheme or the wallet in this case then. Um, on the kind of uh, governance structure, it's uh, Sweden and uh, the Minister of uh, Finance of Finland who, who uh, uh, leads the consortia. Um, and we are, as you said, and as I also said, very keen to work together with the other consortia to get this EU ID wallet uh, working for all the citizens of Europe. Thank you. 
Well, thank you, David. Uh, very interesting use cases indeed. Um, Louis, you're up next. Okay, so <laughs> thanks uh, also for the invite and, and uh, happy to be with all, all colleagues here. Uh, so this is for you, Digital Connections for Europe, uh, focus on, on two business domains. And that's a social security one uh, with two main uh, user journeys. That's the uh, PDA World Portable Document A1 and the AHIC, the European Health Insurance Card. Uh, so citizens, students, whatever, right? When uh, someone travels around, so there's also some links with other consortia that can be established, right? <laughs> On the travel side. <laughs> uh, uh, you need to, or you can take advantage of the AHIC in case you have, in case you have an we don't want it, but if you need some social security coverage, you can take it with the AHIC one. Uh, and the PDA one is uh, just uh, for workers that work abroad uh, to uh, be sure that uh, they are entitled to work abroad and so on. Eh? So that's uh, the social security one uh, on the educational uh, domain. And that's the second uh, great use case. Uh, we are talking about uh, the wallet being the uh, individual learning record, right? The de facto individual learning record, meaning uh, all those uh, credentials, again, during your lifelong journey, right? During your whole entire life, not just primary, secondary, tertiary, adult or Tibet education, but also uh, being uh, an employer uh, with a, in a company, uh, you gain skills and so on. So the companies should be able to also issue those uh, skills that you have gained it, those competences, huh? and you all should have all those on your wallet, right? Uh, it's also about, uh, not just about degrees, about uh, activities, about uh, formal, non-formal, informal education. Huh? It's also about uh, non-fundational uh, IDs. Uh, we mean, for example, being able to demonstrate, to showcase that you are a student, right? Uh, or you belong to one university, to one European alliance or whatever, right? So that, that will be the, the two great use cases. We will establish uh, an internal link between the students onboarding and EHIC onboarding, right? To also facilitate moving abroad. And we will provide also uh, several uh, bridges uh, and converters with other existing uh, services in Europe for education, uh, like the Erasmus with the paper ones and so on, mobility ones. Uh, uh, so we also will provide that because it's so clear for us that uh, the goal is to have real impact, to have uh, real services and uh, to be used to be useful, right? That's that. That's the goal. Eh? From a governance perspective, uh, Spanish Ministry for Economic Affairs and Digital Transformation is leading the, the, is the chair of the consortia, but uh, we are uh, 22 member, uh, member states, 21 member states plus uh, Norway and Ukraine. And uh, we are all more than 80 organizations and uh, we are mostly public driven. Eh? So the, the ministries or national agencies in charge are uh, mostly driving the consortia but of course we also have private uh, partnerships and private companies that will uh, help us to move forward i think that's all from my side yeah thanks thanks lewis um 80 organizations in total that sounds like a lot to handle um but um yeah moritz would you like to present potential Uh, Moritz, I think you're muted, or maybe I just don't. Yeah, I, keep, I I always have the same struggle with the with the AirPods. Maybe tr you can try without. I don't know if I'm the only one not hearing Moritz, but no, nothing. But we heard him uh, earlier. Yeah, on, so. yeah, it worked it worked before. Yeah. No problem. Uh, we'll just move. We'll just move Tor up one spot, and uh, Moritz, uh, you'll get three more minutes to figure out your um, your issues. Otherwise, you can just come to the studio. Uh, you shouldn't be too far. Tor, <laughs> go for it. Okay, so maybe I can, while well, Moritz is uh, connecting his uh, sound. Um, in the Nobit Consortium, at the very basic level, we are. Um, uh, about five, six countries exploring how we should use the, the wallet in our countries. 
preparing for actually implementing in, and using it. So there we are exploring basic use cases, but also additional things like identity matching and the use of signing solutions and so in our services. Um, we are connecting uh, up uh, different um, relying parties in our countries, also aligning to the public um, service provisioning and, and also on the private side. In special, we are working with the, the payment area where we are exploring uh, new ways to do payment uh, with a wallet. So, so basically the focus is, is on account to account payment direct between actors in, in the wallet and, and different uh, areas connected to that. Um, we have structured a consortium also with a fairly large advisory body that also is um, there to uh, support the project in advising and providing uh, insight into the payment sphere. On the private side, we have with us a, a number of, of actors also spanning over banks and payment actors that would help uh, pilot and showcase how we can do uh, payment in, in a new way. So um, then I'm hoping that the sound is back to Morris or else I will have to uh, tell a little joke, Morris. I hope you two can hear us now. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, fine. <laughs> Okay, it just connected, reconnected, uh, everything, and I, I think now it works. I've never um, been happier to hear your voice, Moritz. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, no, thank you for having me. Um, I, I'll start about the, talking about the Potential Consortium. So the Potential Consortium is, is led by France and Germany together, and we have 19 uh, member states plus the Ukraine. Uh, in some, we have 148 organizations um, uh, for the the whole continent, public and private, um, both in a well balance. And uh, the special um, or, or unique selling point as a potential consortium is that we have for the specific use case, not only the very relevant um, private partners, but always uh, in every member state, the specific uh, and relevant uh, regulatory authority in the world. Now, what are our use cases? We have, uh, first of all, a use case focused on e-government services. So using the EU digital identity wallet to register to access government services and later then to get back um, some um, document from the government. And the second uh, one is uh, opening a bank account um, close to the third one. Uh, is um, registering a SIM card with a mobile network operator. Um, all these three use cases focus on the personal identification data. So the focus is how can I uh, take um, the, the PID from the national uh, state to um, towards um, private or public partners in other member states. Uh, that's the first thing. Um, uh, the fourth use case is uh, the mobile driving license uh, use case, we are focusing on how to rent a car, but also in the proximity use case, how to control the driving license um, by the police, for example. So uh, this it contains not only PIT, but also mobile driving license. Then we have a use case focusing on e-health. So it's an e-prescription. And we have one use case, which is like a cross sectoral uh, overall use case, it's uh, use, um, trying out to, to take the qualified electronic signature, um, which is helpful in different use cases. It, just looking back at the use case, um, opening a bank account, for example, I, not, I don't only need um, my personal data, but also I want to sign a contract in the end. So that's something I could do with my qualified electronic signature. And all these use cases, we want to show them cross uh, border um, and yeah, that's uh, that's the idea of potential. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone, for um, for uh, yeah introducing yourself, your your project, and um, first and most of all, uh, staying within the two minutes. I think it's very difficult. I mean, uh, Moritz, I think you win uh, 148 organizations. Um, it's very difficult, of, obviously, to you know summarize everything that you do within two minutes. But I want to. Um, also benefit from the fact that we we can hear you uh, and and ask the first question um, to, to to Moritz. Mm. You, you you said you know um, 
you're in the payment sec uh, sector um, using e-signature. I mean, this is a procedure that is already established in a couple European countries, um, for example, in Austria, for example, in Estonia, et cetera, et cetera. You know them better than me, probably. Um, what do you think uh, you can learn from you know, your partners um, and how can these experiences be, um, like, be drawn from, from the uh, pan-European project? Um, how can they be applied to the development maybe of a German EID? Obviously asking you as a, um, as a member of the um, German Ministry of, uh, of the Interior, um, yeah, how can you benefit uh, from this? Yeah, the, the qualified electronic signature is a good example because in this year's case, Austria is the lead in our consortium because, as we all know, Austria is way ahead and they um, provided an electronic signature for the citizens for free. And this was a real push for the usage of the electronic ID in Austria. So we want to learn from Austria in this case. We want to learn from other member states in other uh, parts of, of the whole a digital identity topic, and I think that's a, a great chance in, in collaborating in, these, um, in this topic. Um, what uh, we expect from the German system, like at the moment we have a very um, close system focused on uh, a national system where um, service providers have to register nationally um, and centrally, and then we have, uh, after this central process, we have a very decentralized system. And what we want to keep is the decentralized system. Uh, our biggest fear is with the IDAS uh, that we have a more centralized system, which is less resilient, which is um, um, which uh, um, bears the risk of uh, external attacks on not only governments but also companies and the whole economy in Europe. Now we should not allow the IDAS to to be a big button to turn off the European economy and the European uh, government. Yeah, that's, that's, that's important. So decentral, um, a decentral system is very important for us and we want to keep this. Um, but and then we see that, that point, we need to make it more easy for service providers to onboard in the whole system. And that's something we have to um, ease up in Germany. And we have to make it more easy to have this cross-border authentications and cross-border um, yeah, mechanisms to share credentials and that's something we we will optimize the german system and make it more compa compatible in the european way yeah so if i understand correctly you think that um you know participating in the consortiums in this european project um that is going to go on for a couple of years um you you think that this will give also a push to the german eid system and also trust services system obviously yeah, for sure. Like we are building upon the German EID system for now because we have a secure system um, and we have a system that is like uh, in the market for uh, 13 years. Um, but it's not the most user friendly system. Uh, that's true. Yeah. So we have to make it more user friendly. We have to look at the level of assurance. Um, so at the moment we have uh, EID means on the, um, on the lower high. That's good for the cases we need lower high, but there may, might be other cases we don't need lower high. So maybe there may, might be um, more easy um, ways to, to use it. But um, talking about trust service providers, I think especially the electronic signature is a way forward to use the EID more often without sharing too much data. Because that's the thing, we don't want over identification. We don't want to present the whole EID every day. We only, but we want the people to use it more often, and um, using it for signature or for other um, functionalities. It's a good way to increase use without increase um, over identification. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. Um, countries that are there are countries in Europe that are a little further in the development of their own EID systems, uh, notably you know, in the, the, the Nordic countries. I know that today we have, we're fortunate enough to have two representatives from, uh, from these countries among us, but I want to ask you, Tor, um, the, the Nordics famously, as I already said, uh, you know, have a very well established national EID system. Um, how do you think uh, your wallet solution can benefit from, from this experience? Maybe the other way around, you know? Um, and yeah, or do you, do you even think, you know, maybe having an EID uh, solution already in place makes you a little biased towards um, 
this project, this European project now, um, mm -hmm. and in the development of a new application? Well, in, in many ways, we have well-developed EID systems, and we are using them for very many services, which spans over a large area. Uh, looking, for instance, uh, around the finance and, and payment area that we are focusing on mainly, uh, we are already onboarding uh, bank customers with EID. I think that is something that we can build on now also in the, in the pilot with the wallet, so we can build on the extensive use of, of EID in, in, uh, in the finance sphere already. The, in the consortium, there is a lot of experience in, in this field. Uh, I also think that these established EID spheres and ways of working will, will uh, both benefit the pilot, but will also challenge the established way of working in, in many ways, in a good way, because we now have the opportunity to test how a wallet with the new functionality will function in all of these business flows that has been around for quite a while. Uh, and if you look at our consortium, we, we have a lot of well-established actors like EID vendors, like banks and, and finance institutions and technology vendors that's been working in this way for many years. And I think the general ID and, and, and the way they see this is that the wallet is the next generation of EID. And this is the great opportunity to actually explore it. So. Uh, for us, it's, uh, it's, it's nothing new in that sense. It's just moving from one version of a well-developed EID system, trying to migrate to the, to the next one. That is, of course, challenging, and that's the why, uh, why these pilots are, are great, because it gives us time to explore when we are actually going to roll out this. And, and this is something we know. That is a massive undertaking, rolling out an entire new EID system in, in our countries. That is something that will take time and effort and money to do. For sure. So then, then, it's not, then we don't want to miss. So we want to, uh, to, uh, to start out in a good way, and that's why piloting is nice. Yeah, starting out in a good way is a is a good keyword, and I think you know there's no growth without challenge. So um, yeah, I'm glad that you, you you see you know ways to incorporate your um, current system, but also um, to that you still look into the future and um, are trying to you know keep developing what you what you already have. I think that's that's very healthy. Um, the 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 other representative from the Nordic uh, countries from from Sweden, David. Your consortium uh, focuses on travel credentials, as you already said, um, but also has you know payments and ODI as a common build as common building blocks. Um, I, I heard that you know some of these um, some of the, these blocks you share in common with other consortiums that um, that we've already heard today. Um, how do you cooperate with other consortiums, especially maybe Nobit? I mean, you're um, not only geographically close, um, you, you you also in at least the you know the same sector, uh, if you're not doing the same thing, um, could you elaborate a little bit on the role um, uh, organizational credentials could play, and 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 how the ED, EU DI wallet um, could be used by organizations as well? But first, you know, answer the please answer the uh, cooperation question. Yeah, the cooperation question. I mean, there are several different ways to, to, that we are doing that. Uh, this one is the kind of formalized way which uh, the European Commission leads with the uh, coordination uh, governance groups. So there, there, all the coordinators uh, are attending. Uh, then we have bilaterals, and I think we should have more. But uh, I would also say that uh, Potential has an open a bank, bank account uh, yep. case, which mm -hmm. is also, of course, into the payments. Uh, and but we, we're coming to it from from a bit different angles with different participants. From from our side, we do have uh, Bank ID. I mean, the Swedish EID scheme uh, uh, partner, big one. Uh, but we also have Visa, Worldline, and Nets. Uh, so so it, it it differs a bit how to approach it. And I think that's a good a good thing for for Europe because then we can uh, test the solutions and different solutions from different angles. Of course, uh, minding that we do need to cooperate and kind of see how they would map into each other. Uh, and and we are we are trying to work that out as, as well, of course. Um, regarding the second question, or organizational uh, digital identity, uh, same thing as with persons, basically. 
organizations also need to identify to themselves and there as the regulation now holds the the the, the articles on on a legal uh, wallet for, for a legal person we need to dig into that uh, deeply um we have done some tri trials in, in in the nordics mostly between sweden and finland but also with norway uh, with the business registers because you cannot need a business register to pr provide the authentic sort of, source of, of an organization uh and and next step of course would be to do that inter interruptible and we we do think that we could find very many be benefits in this because when you create a kind of secu secure uh, line between the the the, the, the verified uh, companies, uh, you can exchange the credentials and you can also automate a lot of processes. So receipts, all of these things that would be uh, very neat to have. Uh, also building on Peppel a lot and the procurement system that we do have in in, in Europe. So there, I think there are many things here that we will also discover uh, along the way, uh, and it, I, I am. I'm, I'm, uh, I do see that the organization identity and is is gaining more uh, attention because of the, the the potential of kind of scaling uh, data flows. And yeah. if I may add, the people that working with organizational identity is literally in the same building that I'm speaking with you now. So I don't think the distance is very large. <laughs> no. Do you want to get them on the phone? Maybe I don't know. If I can go <laughs> down and get them if you want. <laughs> Yeah, um, th but you know, and that's exactly what I what I'm what I was aiming at. You know, I think it's it's um, sometimes we we think of the LSPs as you know separate projects that are just doing basically their own thing, and then after two, three, four years, uh, they come together and present their um, their results to the uh, European Union, and that's it. But I think that that cooperation part is. Um, is so important and um, and very good to see, as I already said, you know, in my introduction, um, to to see you guys um, happily together. Um, before I continue with uh, with my questions, we got a questions from the audience, uh, which I'd like to incorporate. I'll, I'll try to translate it. It's in German. Um, so um, the smart EID basically copies or you know stores the um, the EID's data on the smartphone. Um, the backend infrastructure is going to be continued. Is going to be continued to be used. Is the smart EID going to be forced to be um, to to have the um, W three C verify a credential from the ARF um, added? I don't know who could answer this question best from you. I think this is a pretty technical question. Feel free to discuss to among each other. Yeah, Moritz, go ahead. Yeah, maybe I can step in here. So uh, the idea of a smart EID in Germany, uh, with its project, um, our government um, is, is uh, heading uh, towards um, release uh, later this year, um, is that we have uh, the opportunity to mirror the EID card or the information which is in the chip at the moment of the smart card to the chip, which is in the secure element stored in the phone, so away from the OS of the phone, independently of the OS of the phone. So, so from the functionalities, it's almost the same if you read the card or if you read um, the secure element. It's, it's both ways we have hardware security. In both ways it allows us to to um, open a secure um, channel uh, to communicate. Um, and for the inner German system, this is enough. You know, when it comes to inter, uh, like cross-border communication, what you end with, like, when, it, when it comes to verifiable credentials, and you need to sign um, personal data to, to be transferred. That's uh, not the topic, and we don't uh, need necessarily the secure element for this um, for this. Uh, requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, the secure element is especially important to ensure the secure canal uh, and to allow that uh, the EAC um, works, which is not part of the ARF at the moment. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Moritz. I hope that answers um, uh, the question. Um, Louis, we don't want to keep you waiting. Uh, you haven't said anything oh, for, for quite a while now. Um, so, so let me ask you, I think um, 
I, obviously, I looked at all your um, your projects, you know, your, your outlines, and um, uh, what what struck me uh, with your project was that you explicitly name uh, EBSI, the European Blockchain Services Infrastructure, for those who don't know the acronym, um, as one of the pillars it's built on. Um, c can you tell us maybe what advantages you think uh, blockchain has, and why your use cases, education and social security, are um, you know maybe better suited as use cases than others to use blockchain technology? Yes, maybe uh, instead of uh, uh, blockchain, we can s talk about decentralized, right? Yeah. <laughs> Service or you can platform, talk about right? a, a, anything you want. Uh, yeah. uh, no, no, don't, don't worry. But then uh, the decentralized uh, platform uh, provides uh, several advantages that, as, as just uh, Moritz also also explained before, uh, resilience, availability, scalability, and so on, so on, so on. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, when we talk about uh, if the decentralized platform is <laughs> provided by a blockchain infrastructure, blockchain service, eh, well, then we have other values there, right? Uh, being able to, to do things that maybe uh, are more difficult to do if we do, you don't have a, a blockchain uh, platform, right? Uh, as for example, you know, uh, you, will be, you should be able then to verify something that was pure but it was you can be able to check that yes at that time of each ones that was uh, <laughs> that was okay that was the status was valid and so on and several other ones eh? we can talk about that another day <laughs> <laughs> but uh, why uh, we talk about the uh, decentralization of biofair credentials eh? because and in, in the uh, EPSI, EPSI uh, the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure, that's uh, a pan-European project with all member states plus European Commission. Uh, we've been working for the light, uh, last uh, four years right, on the educational space. Uh, same goals, uh, uh, all type of level of education and so on. So we have uh, all the foundation on verifiable credentials uh, and mm -hmm. the advantage that they can bring uh, to the business domain how we we can flexibilize education we can uh, also stack uh, credentials uh, uh, being able to to provide uh, new uh, learning outcomes uh, based on, on on little ones and so on right <laughs> uh, so uh, all this uh, knowledge all this work already done by all member states uh, uh, is a value that we can also take advantage uh, on dg 4 eu uh. so that's what we talk about that uh, and it's important to understand that the ARF, the Architect Reference Framework, uh, EADAS1 was uh, for identity, yeah. and it also provides a trust framework. It means different actors, roles, but also procedures, security measures, and so on. That now needs to be uh, also defined for every sectorial domain, right? So issuers in the educational domain, also the security one, right, will play several roles. Uh, of course, maybe they can be an, an authentic source, uh, so the one who owns and maintains the data, uh, the, 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 yes, the value. <laughs> uh, they can also take the role of being the issuers. Uh, it can be then uh, a qualified electronic attestation of attributes or just an electronic attestation of attributes. Uh, that also relates to the existing governance in each of the memory states and so on, so on, so on, so on. Uh, so a decentralized platform uh, is suitable also to uh, provide or uh, not just the support for the trusted uh, lists of the trusted sources of the issuers, verifiers, relying parties, blah, 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 all this stuff, schemas, uh, status, and so on, but also the governance itself uh, in a cross-sectorial domain. <laughs> that, that's the value. And that's why we uh, will reuse all that knowledge. Eh? But of course, that need to, needs to be scaled up to adapt to the ARF. And that's the contribution that we will do also with DC for you. Yeah, thank you so much. Do you think? Um, do you see any other use cases, maybe, uh, but more specific use cases than um, than just the two that you that you're already focusing, social security and health? Uh, for uh, sorry, for for for, 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 for a decentralized uh, for the decentralized. decentralized yeah. Yeah, I think also, uh, but David can confirm, <laughs> they will also work with the verifiable credentials paradigm and decentralization. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, and uh, it can be applied to any sectorial domain. Eh? Uh, the key point here is that uh, a legal entity, right, uh, 
holds uh, <laughs> the centralized identifier, right? Uh, that's that's a pseudonym on, on the AI does context, right? Yeah, on the AI does to context, a pseudonym, mm -hmm. and you can link uh, identities, public uh, public keys, uh, whatever, right, to that pseudonym, but also the accreditations. What this legal entity is entitled to do in this domain, and that can be defined per several domains, mm -hmm. right? So a legal entity using one only one unique stack of technology that's the verified credentials the way we standardize how we package information share it and unpack it and unpacked information can be used uh, on a cross sectorial uh, base basis right yeah. so that that that's one of the values then we need to agree uh, per domain on key points as the semantic how we will describe the data Right, uh, and that's also one of the opportunities of LSPs being able to establish in a European context common <laughs> schemas uh, on specific sectorial data. Yeah, thank you. Um, talking about the um, yeah advantages uh, of the European project, and to wrap up this uh, the session because we're almost um, almost through already. Um, time flies. Um, I'll start again on the left, uh, David. Maybe with my last question: If we meet here again next year in 2024, you know, you'll you'll will be well into your uh, specific projects. Um, what would you be? What you, what would you like to be able to say about your respective project and the state of the uh, UDI wallet, uh, maybe in general? What would you like to see then? Mm, if if we are at the end of the twenty twenty four, I think we could say something. Uh, it will it will take some time, and this this is uh, I mean highly complicated. Um, I what I would like to say I would like to say that we do have a, an actual flow that that works where you can see all the participants engaging and using uh, the the the, the you know, wallet and and uh, and exchanging credentials. Uh, I don't think that we will be production ready at that time. Uh, we will probably need some more, uh, but but I think that uh, as soon as we can really get the technology working on on, on like an infrastructure level and see see how the flows are, then we can kind of go to the next level and see how how we actually could, can improve them uh, with the with wallets and also make sure assure the interoperability between the consortia, between the member states and uh, the different sectors. Louis, you, you're already nodding. What what do you think? What would you like to say next year? No, no, I I, I fully agree with with David. And uh, to be realistic, eh? uh, I would yeah. be so happy if not me, but just uh, some real citizen <laughs> in a pilot mode can explain. I am able to do this uh, to onboard on the uh, educational domain and also on the social security domain. That should be enough for next year at this time, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that would be, that would be quite, uh, quite the big step. Moritz, I see you thinking uh, very hardly about, about this question. What do, you, what do you think? What would you like to say next year? Yeah, I, I can just uh, agree to my, to my um, colleagues here. Um, who are, who are saying like we won't have a really productive system in the next year? Yeah, we will have a testing system. We will see uh, or have first experiences, and maybe and that would be my wish. We have more clarity about what the UDI wallet actually is in the end because it's not a product. Yeah, it's more a concept. It's more basic infrastructure, and on this infrastructure we will have several different solutions, and uh, there will be much consolidation. What in the end? will be called UDI wallet and, and how many UDI wallets we, we will have in, in, in the very end. So maybe we have more clarity because there are a lot of open, um, open questions. And uh, I hope that uh, by next year at this time, uh, we have resolved some of the puzzles uh, that are still ahead. Yeah, let's hope we don't have uh, even more questions then to answer than, uh, than we have today. Um, I think that would already be a be a step 
Tor, your final final thoughts on on this? I mean, you, you're not allowed to repeat what your uh, colleagues have already said, so no, I, make something um, up. I don't, I don't need to because it's uh, almost like we are writing the same project plan, which is yeah. strange actually, because we have the same dependency on on external factors, and we need uh, the regulation, the REF, and also also the elements that are built around the reference implementation to Mushore. Uh, uh, I think we will be much on, on the same stage. And I, I also hope that the, the actors that are part of the LSP will mature and have a better understanding on, on how this new infrastructure should can be used in, in our society. Uh, that's what I see when we are talking with actors. It's, it's actually a quite a big change, this way to use evidence and, and uh, being to able to share data in, in a new way. So I, I hopefully we can demonstrate that better for you next year. <laughs> Okay, well, that's uh, that sounds optimistic. Uh, I'll take you up on it. Um, that that's it for our panel already. Um, thank you, thank you so much, uh, each and every one of you, into all corners of Europe uh, for participating today. I think um, let's just say we meet here again next year. Um, not same time; it's going to be a different date. But uh, mm -hmm. let's meet here again next year and and uh, discuss what. Um, yeah, what, what state we're going to be in next year. Um, this is good recorded, so I'll take you up on uh, on it. Um, yeah, you're laughing now. So um, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'll switch back into German to um, address the audience again. Um, danke, danke an alle, tak und uh, gracias. I don't know. I hope Swedish and Norwegian is tak, same thing. Um, Vielen Dank äh, an Sie alle zu Hause, dass Sie äh, uns so lange treu geblieben sind. Ein langer Tag geht äh, fast zu Ende, noch nicht komplett. Ähm, hier auf der Mainsta Mainstage äh, sind wir jetzt äh, fertig mit diesem sehr spannenden äh, Panel. Ein guter Abschluss, denke ich, für dieses europäische ähm, Projekt. Wir, äh, ja, wir haben noch drei Minuten, zweieinhalb Minuten auf meiner Uhr, ähm, ehe die letzte, das, die, die letzte Veranstaltung losgeht. Bleiben Sie noch ein bisschen dran und ähm, ansonsten würde ich einfach sagen, schönen Abend Ihnen. Vielen Dank ähm, an Sie alle, dass Sie so treu dabei geblieben sind. Vielen Dank natürlich auch an unsere ähm, Gäste, an unsere Partner, an unser Team ähm, behind the scenes sozusagen. Und äh, von meiner Seite bis nächstes Jahr.